Hi, this is Ariel with Homeschool Together Podcast, and I wanted to record this video today to show you an advanced technique with the program Trello. We use Trello as part of our uh, homeschool planning, well, as the tool, the main tool we use to plan in our homeschool. We covered it extensively in episode 38 of our podcast. If you haven't listened to that yet, I recommend that you go down into the description for this video and you'll find a link to that episode. And we talk all about the ways that we leverage this free tool to um, maximize our homeschool. So one of the advanced techniques that we talked about in that episode was the ability to link cards to other cards and to checklists in Trello. And that uh, pointing to other cards was a little bit confusing. We had a couple of our listeners ask about that. So I want to show you what that looks like so you can understand uh, how to do it and then the power of that. So uh, right here I have our my board for Right Start Math. As you can see, we're working through Right Start Math Level A currently. And each of these cards has a number of uh, checklists. These are 1 through 25, lessons 26 through 50, and so on. I broke these down into smaller segments just so that I didn't have to type in quite so many. But as you can see, what I've done here is uh, when I started, I just hit checklist and I made a checklist called lessons and it started it. And then I added all of the lesson numbers here and you can see how you can add further items. So once I have this, this is great. Uh, what I was originally doing was um, if you, if I go over here, I have a board called this week that I use, and that's where I show just what we're doing for the week. So that when Matthew is in the homeschool room and he's working with our uh, five-year-old daughter on her lessons, he doesn't have to look at everything. He just looks at what we're focusing on this week. So what I was doing originally was I had to put in a card for every Right Start Math lesson. I couldn't just say, uh, you know, right start math lesson and be generic about it because I wanted some way that we could record uh, that we had done lesson 25, lesson 26, lesson 27, right? Um, so I was having to create cards specifically for each lesson, which was very cumbersome. Uh, and then I heard about this technique and I thought, this is the stuff. So what, I, what I've done is I've created these checklists and then I'm going to give an example of how we would make a card and point to that checklist. So let's call it um, Right Start Math Lesson. Okay. Once I have that card here, and this card could be on any board. So I actually have this card on my This Week uh, board. So any card you want to take, if you go over here to Attachment, this is where you can attach Dropbox or Google Drive files or anything else you have on your computer. But you see here, you can also attach Trello. So a few different options you have. You can actually attach a, a card. This gives you the recent cards that you've, that you've used. Um, and this gives you some boards. So you can attach either. But if you go here and you search, right here I've got lessons 26 through 50. But let's say I wanted to, that we're on lesson 60 right now. I would go ahead and search um, and I would say 51, look it's looking, there it is. Okay, so it's found the card and I'm going to link this card here. Now this is all ready to go. So what, what kind of power does this give me? So I can take this card in my this week board, uh, which I'll show you briefly. So. Um, at the end of my this week, I just have one Right Start Math lesson and I have a reading lesson as we're doing all about reading. Um, and I can just keep copying these cards and move them wherever I want throughout the week. As you can see, here's a Right Start Math, here's a reading lesson. So, okay, what does that do though? Here's what it does. So when you go to do a lesson, two things. One, I don't have to remember exactly where I'm at in that lesson. Um, as far as I don't have to remember that I'm on right start math number 62 because I'll be able to go right to the card where I have it checked off. And also I don't have to create a unique card every time. So I guess this is not a good example because we're, we're actually uh, here in 26 through 50. So I'll show you on this week. This is what we actually use. So here, if we click on this, if I click here, it's going to go through and open this card. And so what Matt can do is say, ah, we're on lesson 44. He completes it and he clicks that button and he checks off lesson 44 and it goes and it checks it off here. 
So every week we just keep the same card that says Right Start Math Lesson. And I can make a couple of copies of it because we typically do two math lessons a week and go ahead and move those to whatever day I want. When he opens that card, he just goes in and he opens the checklist and he checks off the right number that he did. And then the way that we structure our this week board is we actually have a completed work column and everything that he does, he moves over. So you can see he's already completed a right start math lesson for this week. Um, and this is great because I just don't have to create a unique card every time. It keeps track of where I'm at um, without having to do that manual operation every week of going, okay, what lesson are we on? Well, let's see. Oh, let's look back at last week. Oh, okay, wait, we completed lesson 43. So now I got to go in here. I got to create a new card. I have to say it's lesson 44 and then lesson 45 and I have to make these new cards. Instead, at a new week, all I do is go over here to write start math lesson and I say copy card, create. Boom. I have a second copy of that card. When I go in, right here is all my lessons and I know exactly where I'm at. So the only thing that I need to do because I did put these lessons in smaller groupings of 25 is I will need to update the card when we've moved through 25 full lessons. You don't have to do that. I could have put all 132 lessons in one checklist and that would have been fine. Uh, I just didn't decide to do it that way and I may decide to do it that way in future but I felt like this was easy because when Matt's teaching uh, he's actually scrolling on his iPhone to check off items and I didn't want the list to get too long. So but you can see the power of linking cards um, and there there might be some other things where that's helpful to you that you want to refer back to a card on another board right I have a right start math board I have a, a reading board which has our all about reading lessons on it that I do the same thing with so anywhere that you might want to call another card or call another board you can do that and you just do it through this easy use of the attachment feature so I hope this was helpful to you if you come up with uh, any other ways that you think it would be really awesome to link cards I'd love to hear about it leave a leave a comment and uh, I'm always looking to learn something new with Trello so uh, until next time I hope this was super helpful and I appreciate you watching